you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kiriaki. That's me. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special segment of Culture Kids. It's everything NFT related. I have an exciting guest for you today. His name is Tarzan. First, I want to inform you, we are still in the top 1.5% out of almost 4 million podcasts. Because of you, we're in the top 1.5%. This really means a lot. Make sure you're subscribing if you're not already. Share this episode with one person. Also, we have giveaways. So check the link below and maybe you can win an NFT, maybe some time with me. So we're doing giveaways every single episode now. So make sure you're subscribing, hit the five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, hit the five stars, leave a review. Please share this with at least one person on social media platforms. However you want to share it, it really means the world for us. Today, we're going to be talking about the environment and NFTs and Solana with Gorilla Gang. So Tarzan is the creator of Gorilla Gang. Tarzan, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? Hello there. Hello, everyone listening to this amazing podcast. I'm doing amazing today. I'm really happy that I made it to the She's All Over the Place podcast. And I'm excited to share with you guys what we are building in Solana. Yay! Oh, before I forget, because I always do, make sure the link is below that you um, go to the YouTube because we're on video right now. So if you're listening audio, if you want to pop over to the video, come on over. So, oh, so I'm in New York City right now. And I actually went to Solana Spaces for the first time the other day. It's in Hudson Yard. And um, I got Solana socks. I should be wearing them right now. But yeah, I, I got Solana socks. I'm a sock girl. So, oh, does Gorilla Gang have socks yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yet is the key word. But that's a great idea. I'll be the brand ambassador. Right. Let's go. So let's go. Tell us about Gorilla Gang. Oh, so first, it's the very first green chip on Solana. It's the only green chip on Solana. And you started Gorilla Gang in 2018, right? Yes. So just to put you a little bit in perspective with our timeline. We started on 2018 as a matcha brand. So it was until 2021 that we started developing the foundations for our community to go alive worldwide and global. So it was three years of developing and caring our mission through a matcha brand. So matcha, for those of you listening, matcha is green tea powder. It's uh, categorized as a superfood. It's big and popular in many countries in the world. We've been finding our way through, through Web3 now to uh, different clients and people uh, consuming our products. So matcha is an antioxidant bomb, so it keeps you, I mean, not quite specifically junk, but it helps you with aging, digestion, focus, being relaxed and energized at the same time. So it's amazing, it's amazing. I think you haven't tried it. It makes me want to have like a hot matcha right now. We could totally be just sipping matcha together. Absolutely. Yeah, I need, I definitely, I saw the packaging in Denver at Future mm -hmm. Shape 360 when you were on stage. Yeah, I need to, I, my sister loves matcha. In LA and New York, there's cha-cha matcha. It's a big thing. Oh my God. Turmeric yes. lattes, matcha lattes. I'm a matcha girl, lavender lattes. So where is your matcha sourced? Our matcha is sourced from Japan, specifically from the Kagoshima prefecture. I was there in 2018, choosing the best for, for our clients. Ooh, yummy, yummy, yes. delicious, <laughs> love that. So that's so cool that you started with the matcha, the brand, and you, you built the community and then pivoted into NFTs. Because the thing about blockchain community NFTs, it's all about community, community. And people say they want to build a community. Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's like, yeah, you don't want to build community. You want to build clients. So like those are dollar signs for you. So like <laughs> to actually build community, I'm a cross country runner, short term, medium term, long term goals. Like I know what it takes for sustainability, which you're all about. Gorilla Gang's all about sustainability, the environment and like having a long term goal. So so starting off with your matcha and having them 
finest quality and going to the natural source in Japan, you were able to build your community that way. So lead us on the journey. Like how was it for you to build community and the importance and the qualities that you were looking for when building your specific community? Like what were your intentions and from within, from without, from without, from within for it to like go back and forth? Because so many people have such a hard time with community and building community. And it's difficult. It is so difficult to build a community, like really and sustain it, right? And like by yourself. And then like, how do you, but it starts with the individual and then you have pillars of support. Do you want to um, like take it away with some ideas and, and, and share and let us know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So just as you were saying, uh, building community is no easy task. And at the beginning, we were basically with the matcha brand itself, we were just building our our client base, which some of them were attracted to the web tree and the NFT aspect of Gorilla, which is the Gorilla Gang. And they pivoted from there because there is utility with the token that we are providing. So for having a, an NFT stake, you are receiving Shelba, which is our crypto. But that was the, the early times for the community building. But I really suggest that anyone out there trying to build a community, I think first of all, you need to put trust and something that we used and it was helpful. It was doxing ourselves when anyone was willing to dox and anyone was willing to do that connection of putting your face out there enough so people recognize you, mm -hmm. then being available for them on on the early stages that's extremely important to be available for them so we were going daily on these spaces and uh, clearing out any questions on the project and where how does this work also it's basically um of course we are uh, trying to go into autonomy whenever you are putting the steps towards creating a DAO. But at the beginning, it's like uh, all centralized and all very similar to Web2. So as any other brand, you need to provide an excellent customer service to say like that, like community member service, like there's going to be a lot of newbies that want to be part of your community, but they don't even know what a crypto wallet is. So uh, really be patient and available for them because I think everyone listening to this is somehow into NFTs. And I think the collective mission that we all have is to onboard more people. So being extremely patient, uh, educational, you know, like providing information on how this technology is going to help the world. And finally, being uh, consistent, putting you yourself, your persona and your mission and your, your passion for this technology, Web3, out there like consistent where out where and when you say spaces you mean twitter spaces when you were in the spaces yes yes yeah like twitter so when did you start doing twitter spaces i started doing twitter spaces more than a year when they started yeah <laughs> when they <laughs> we were there when, <laughs> we were there yeah were, so were you in clubhouse before uh spaces no okay and needed to mention i was not at all well barely on crypto so i i skipped the usual introduction that is day trading or yeah uh, you know altcoins cryptos or even forex so risky yeah uh, yeah i dipped straight into nfts and it's it was since october that i was hopping october 2021 that i was hopping in the spaces with small knowledge you know you're not going to be an expert out there, but I think if you are within your niche, you will find understanding from your audience, you know, like, yeah, you, you shouldn't be talking about something you don't, you don't know about. Yeah. 1000. So when yeah. you are um, talking to the community, what are some quality questions that as a leader that you ask to find out which direction you should go or what step to take next? Is it micro steps and you ask certain questions like you have an idea and then you ask your community that you're building, like what they think about it or do you make the choices for them? Like, how is it? I think on an early stage, I mean, as I mentioned before, we everyone's aiming to become a DAO. All projects are centralized 
at the beginning because it's an it's coming from an idea to a person or a small group of persons materializing so if you put everything to a community opinion maybe it's hard for you to get to your goal you know so on a mid to long term vision you should be asking almost everything but mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. it's okay if you if you follow your plan or or knowledge that's mm -hmm. my opinion mm -hmm. okay thank you thank you for that yeah. so Awesome. So, so the matcha brand was called Gorilla Gang when you first started. That was the name of the matcha brand. It was named Gorilla Matcha. Oh, yeah, Gorilla Matcha. Um, Gorilla Matcha. Okay, and then so you built community, and then um, successfully, you have a great community. And if people want to be a part of the Gorilla Gang community, how can they uh, be a part of your community? You can be a part of our community initially by following our socials. So Twitter, Instagram, that's the main two socials that we are right now, Gorilla E NFT. You can be part of any cleanup activity that we have either in South Mexico or in North Mexico. Now we're we're getting some traction there as well as joining the Discord and take a, a time to hang with the community and meet people like like minded. And you can become part of the community and start mining our own crypto, which is a challenge by purchasing an NFT. Um, we're listed on Magic Eden and OpenSea. And all those yeah. will be in the show notes below. And gratefully, over the summer after we all met, there was the first beach cleanup in California. And I brought like, I invited so many people, but I like seven people actually showed up. It was awesome. Yeah. And um, we did the beach cleanup in California. And then we even like shot a PSA. We There was a lot of plastic, you know, like there was a lot of cigarette butts. And, you know, like I like the environmental aspect Aspect, you know, being green, sustainability, the environment. So tell us about your passions with the environment and sustainability and how that all affects and uh, correlates to the brand. Yeah, absolutely. So this is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big passion as well as the rest of the community. Yeah, I, I have we have a big passion to uh, and a mission to empower Earth through NFTs. So the main project behind uh, Gorilla Gang, even though our brand, our matcha brand means a lot for us and it's already expanding across the globe. We just made it to Hawaii and we are trying to land it in Australia. Thanks to the community. So shout out to the Gorilla community for taking the, the, the correct spirit behind the, this whole project. You know that we're sharing the brand, we're sharing the project, we're sharing the space. Besides the matcha and the other experiments that we've, we've been doing. Sounds like there's a gorilla in the, in the background going on right now. Oh, is there a gorilla over here? I, I, hear, I hear like a gorilla back there wanting to like come on the screen. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> Okay, anyways, what were you saying? Yeah, so... I got distracted. <laughs> I started having visuals. We are, we are, we're developing a our main project that we are going to be putting a lot of energy during this year and the upcoming years, of course. It's our own recycling center in South Mexico. So we've been working out our alleys, our partners, and of course, the strategy. So it's really interesting and fun how we're going to be gamifying recycling from now on with the help of Web3. We're going to be bringing utility for our token from the recycling business. So the Gorilla Gang, we acquired a truck. So it's a 12-ton payload truck that is get, it's intended to put Tulum and the, the surrounding cities to tap in into the recycling, you know, there's need, yeah. there's there's big need down there on recycling infrastructure, and we're developing this in Tulum. Yeah, in Tulum, in Playa del Carmen, in Cancun. Yeah, all Mexico, all Mexico is in crazy need. I think having a blue bean, for example, here in Texas now, well, since our energy and where we're going is to develop our recycling center. Yeah. Yeah. In South Mexico, we are, we're really excited about it. I think we are halfway there with the investments. As I mentioned, we have a truck and we are missing to purchase 
a plastic shredder machine. So we're going to enter a really interesting industry that at the beginning is a plastic shredder. Then we scale it up to washing the plastic. Mm. Then you add another step. You add another step where you start creating the plastic pellets, and then you sell it to the to the plastic factories. But for now, we're gonna start recollecting the plastic and shredding it for profits, of course, which are yeah are intended to stay within the organization. That's really interesting. I don't. Yeah. No, if you remember or not, but a few years ago, Pharrell teamed up with um, a company out of Amsterdam and they took plastic from the ocean and they made jeans and they went for like over $500. But oh, um, yes. Maybe it was with, with G Star Raw. Maybe he did it with G Star. But oh, yeah. do you remember they took plastic from the ocean um, yeah. and they recycled it and they made clothing with it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I recall that. And I think there's a lot of opportunity either in the fashion industry, either in the um, any industry. You, I mean, plastic, it's everywhere. I think plastic, it's <laughs> literally, I think personally, I think it's an amazing invention because it has allowed us to grow with technology, you know, make it this far. But we are messing up with the way that we are handling waste or even labeling waste because there's no such thing as a way if you think about that in this rock that we live there is no such thing as a way there's it's one ecosystem and we cannot throw things away just like that so if you have recycling infrastructure in your city i really encourage you to use it because there's other countries and part of the world that would really appreciate that <laughs> yeah a couple of things uh one big rock will smith is the narrator. There's six Ooh. episodes. It's on Netflix. Every single episode will just blow your mind away. And it reminded me of something that you just said, because the very first episode, it talks about the one big rock, which is our planet. And it talks about destruction and chaos and the beauty and how like how it heals itself. It's meant to be destructed in such a way. It even talks about the air that we breathe, how it comes from the Amazon and how the yes. wind, because of the trees and because of the Amazon and with the wind, the way that it blows, that's how it blows all the way over to where, where we are now individually. And it's just so just, uh... <laughs> mind blowing like the world and the inventions and how we utilize these tools and the choices we make. And I love how mindful you are and what you've created and who you are, what you stand for, the community and the people you surround yourself with, the clientele, you know, that you surround yourself with. Because, you know, in business, it's not just like you want everyone to buy. No, you don't want everyone to buy. Just like you don't want to like go into bed with everyone because that's how it is. It's like... When you sleep, you're thinking about your customer. When you sleep, you're thinking about yourself. And when you wake, you're serving these people. You don't want to serve certain people just like you don't want to like be in bed with everyone. Just like you don't maybe don't want to go to every single country in the world. Or maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> but like, you know, it's the same thing when building a community brand and business. We don't need everyone, 8 billion people. Like the more specific we are, you know, the better it is. And the fine tuning exactly. of, of the quality and what we're into. And so that's why, like, I love you to death, like, in, for eternity. And because, like, I'm, like, sustainability, environment, being green. Like, I'm like, yo, first green chip on Solana. Like, I'm, like, bullish on it, like, 1,000%. Because of, like, who you are as a person, what you stand for. Let's go. Like, who <laughs> you are, what you stand for. It's so important. And it's... And, you know, I want to say like, you know, for someone like you, maybe, you know, it's not rare because you're living it, breathing it every day. But I yearn and always strive to be around this and sustain it because like I've been around some bad people. I've been around some really, really bad people. And then I forget to check in, you know, even though I speak about ethics, morals and values and I'm conscious of what I eat and what I put into my body, blah, blah, blah. But still, like there's other layers of foundations to that. We are what we eat. We are our environment, you know. Exactly. And, and we can be preaching it all day, but we have to like sometimes let down our guard and let it be reciprocated and be and just sit and let it flow to us. Because 
I've been so that I've like, you know, I've been around some bad people. And even with how conscious and who I am still like these creepers creep in and it always will be that. So do you have any thoughts on some of the things I just mentioned or want to talk about plastic more? No, I, I literally love and resonate with what you said. Sometimes your your circle doesn't need to be huge for you to be proficient and going forward, you know, like you let in, you put no filters to say it like that. And you will have a whole lot of different mindsets and people for you to be around with. But if you niche yourself as we did with environment, whenever I chose to put big part of my energy on the environment wellness, I realized that this is a topic and passion that there's no way I like, I will be finding, slowly finding the correct, sorry, the the people that is alike. Sorry, the, sorry, the, yeah. the minds alike on the topic. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to share a couple things on how I think, because at the beginning, I, like five years ago that I started preaching to say like that about the environment. <laughs> That's was, what it feels like. It sounds like preaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it, when it all started like going really hard, it was actually like a, like a year before the turtle video that went viral. Do you remember that? The turtle having a straw in his nose. <gasps> So I was already deep into the activism and um, pointing out that plastic was evil. I just I just reassured that I think plastic is a great invention. But at the moment, before my first burnout, I was just focusing on the giant problem. The giant problem, I was just thinking that we have a problem and I was just focusing on the problem. But as I mentioned, I burned out eventually because i thought i was just bringing buckets out of the ocean you know like not moving forward until my brother-in-law she shared with me a book that i i would recommend to anyone out there that it's um, has some interest on different points of view on sustainability the book's name is down to earth by bruno latour rest in peace he he passed away on October last year, so very recently. But mm. he's, he's a, he was a, well, he is still exists on my thoughts. He's a French philosophist that gives a really nice um, point of view on sustainability and the ways to reverse or fight climate change. So I'm going to get it right now. In a, let's get it. In a nutshell, I'm getting it right now. <laughs> in a nutshell, Bruno communicated me just a little thing that he was focusing on the solution better than in the problem. So I took my time to realize that I was needing to to focus on the positive and the the positivity that comes within sustainability. So it's a really interesting way of life. Disclaimer, you don't need to do it perfectly. Just start adopting little things on your life because that's how we're going to see a real change. Everybody doing it imperfectly. You get me? Otherwise, if we have yeah 1% of the whole world's population doing it perfectly, that would make no change at all. So we just need to share the share the mindset share the lifestyle that it's okay and it's fun to be um conscious with the earth yeah and yeah last lastly one thought that i wanted to add is that at the beginning it was hard for me making everyone empathic about the environment uh, about nature because we all take it for granted but when you go and and make people realize that we should fight climate change for humanity because i mean the planet can wipe out itself and exist again you know but humans we are already here and if we don't do nothing for climate change i think there's gonna be a lot of suffering for humans you know like yeah yeah floodings overheat storms all everything there's sufferings now people are suffering exactly. now and that's a part of life a part of life is suffering yeah to know great suffer to understand the depths of joy and and the greatness so it's a gift to be able to feel 
Yes. You know, being an, a fellow empath, like I love that. And yeah. it took me a long time to realize what you just said because I'm such like a person. Um, but now I'm dismantling and kept dismantling in so many ways, but totally dismantling one step at a time, one person, one podcast, one thought, one book at a time. Amazing. And I'm rediscovering myself and the journey of knowing myself, then I can really get to know, like, understand and feel that feeling of being alive and, and being yeah. here and then and then sharing that. But knowing, but appreciating it because searching for it for so long and then being numb to not knowing that feeling, you know? Yeah, so uh, that's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, thank you. And, I, and I'm really glad you are, as you mentioned, just, uh, figuring out life again to say like that because yeah we are really entering i think that we are really entering a big wave of technology advance you know with the chat gpt and all the ai tools yeah. coming in oh my god it's crazy and yeah of course web3 more countries around the world brazil in latin america el salvador like if the country we're settled doesn't move forward, we will have to move to those countries. I mean, my humble opinion is that it's a little bit of a red flag, the countries that are opposing against crypto, sim similar to the countries that banned Wi-Fi and internet because they were kind of left behind. There's a couple out there. But controlling it's it's very controlling too it's controlling yes but yeah. I, I really something we have within our slang or daily words within the gorilla gang is the new earth the new earth that's being built by these new mindsets and these new technologies and i'm really excited we're really excited i think people has no idea what we are projecting for chelva our token so XLVA right now is it's our utility token of the project Gorilla Gang. It's um, it's already being used for of course ordering matcha. You mentioned it earlier. The merch we haven't released it yet, but there's there's merch coming and there's gonna be. A... I'm the model. I am ready. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm ready. And yeah. we would we would need to kind of have a talk in private because there's a, yeah. a really inter interesting initiative in LA with a program to give Chelva utility with the clothes recycling. So yeah. we're kind of waiting on that to settle to release our merch our yeah. merch collections. Yeah. With a consciousness program on recycling your clothes and stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then um, Free Arts, they're in New York City. I've volunteered with them for years with kids, with some of my friends um, in fashion. And um, they pivoted into NFTs and crypto um, like six months ago. Yeah, like they have um, Marc Jacobs and they're like huge in fashion and the creator and everything. And I have a personal relationship with them. So I think it could be really apropos to do something during like New York Fashion Week with Free Arts with the kids. It's a nonprofit. Oh my God. It's fashion. They're very, they're all like Sotheby's Christie's. Like I went to their first annual thing that was like at Sotheby's a couple years ago, Crazy. you know, with the parents and the kids and stuff. I know. And, but I'm here in New York. So like I can be on the ground for you and like take meetings, but, or we could just like arrange that. But I think I was just seeing them today posting something, but uh, yeah, Mark Jacobs and like um, some like really cool friends who are in all the like high end fashion area. I've been in fashion since I was a kid. I've been going to New York Fashion Week since I was a teenager. So um, yeah, so let's talk offline about that and, and make those introductions. So I think that could be a cool, a cool collaboration. You got it, girl. You got it. With the kids. With the kids, like making gorillas or something like that. Yeah. That's so, that could be super cool. Oh my God. Maybe. And then I don't know, but why don't we could maybe, why don't you talk to Cha Cha Matcha? I mean, they probably have their own thing going on, but see if they could use your, your matcha or maybe do a limited edition like you know what i mean something that's in la and new york with cha-cha you know cha-cha matcha right yeah 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 i've been there in new york it's yeah 
heaven. Yeah, I mean, it's heaven. I mean, they have their own thing going on, but mm-hmm. maybe see, I don't know, if they'll do like a Gorilla Gang limited edition and, and like test it out and see how it does. Wow. Wow. That's, that's just like an idea, but I think yeah. That's, that, that's a really, everything that you said, I really like the the opportunity on the fashion industry. Yeah. And it's a plus that there is involvement of the kids because literally kids are the ones that are going to be carrying this world in a couple of decades, you know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. we need to educate them and provide them the, the best information that we can gather from our surroundings. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down to. Yeah. To work, yeah, work something out, and with the matchup, I think uh, that was really a big. I really want the the matcha brand, our Gorilla Matcha, to be friendly enough, you know. So as people, whenever people, let's say Chacha Matcha, they realize that we are not a competitor, we are an ally, you know, for yeah, for bringing the, the matcha culture further. So this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Building the project, the brands like this. So if they, and you don't know until you have the conversation, but if they think the way you are and the way I am, they'll see it as an, a valuable asset, right? Exactly. To weave in and to come together. If not, if not, whatever. But but I think also it would be really, really chic and cool to have a matcha party, like a pop-up matcha party during um, New York Fashion Week, which happens twice a year. So probably mm-hmm. not in the winter, but it would be dope to have like in September to have, and we can plan it together, but have like a, a matcha pop-up party during New York Fashion Week. Yeah. And then I think what, what could be really chic, I love Paris Fashion Week, I've been there, to bring matcha to the Parisian. So if we curated something in such a like a way at a chateau or something and did a pop-up, like I know the lay of the land and the vibes in the area, and we did like a gorilla gang like takeover and we do like a, a matcha pop-up during Paris Fashion Week. Oh my God. Like, you know, like I would, we should go and do that. Just like a crew of us like go and show up because the merch will be ready then, you know, even before the merch gets ready, like have, just have like uh, stickers and like t-shirts and just like like representing the brand and, and things like that. But we'll talk about it. I'm down. We, we'll definitely talk about it. Yeah. Yay. That sounds- Let's go. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. Guys, everyone should apply to be on She's All Over The Place podcast because <laughs> you can see how amazing her mind is and she can create out of nothing. Well, of course, all her networking and all her uh, work that she's been building along the years. But this girl is full of surprises love and light thank you thank you thank you yeah thank you you're <laughs> thank very you. sweet i appreciate you Yay. Yes. okay so moving along did you want to talk about the uh the real estate aspect in tulum yeah the well yeah i i was literally just going there i wanted to to invite everyone to my home country mexico right uh like it's a big country that maybe you hear many things in the media but uh living there i think you should allow yourself to meet the mexican people and the mexican food and our culture overall um i think if you go and you stay within the main like just don't go very further from the touristic zone or just keep it simple you will have a great time in mexico like it's a beautiful country down there in tulum there's such an energy this energy ah i don't know if you've been to tulum before listen i did a passerby or one time i was in it i was like next door i was in a condo it was like this whole like thing where they gifted me this amazing resort like two condos and i like brought my sister and she had her own condo and i had my own condo and i was there for a few weeks it was amazing and like tulum was like 30 minutes away so it was like next to tulum oh yeah but it's different almost there what Mm -hmm. yeah but it's different but the thing is i've been to mexico many times cabo st lucas las ventana like only 55 rooms like there's no money it's just like you're 
key card or your key yeah. <laughs> thing. Like there's no money. And it's and I, I went to the Palmia one and only before it became like a kid zone. But and everyone's like this. And it was amazing. But I love Mexico. I've been to Cabo many times. Uh, I, I did like a passerby or in like I said, in um, Tulum when I went to um, uh, the ruins and I went on like oh, a tour one time. Yeah. So I, I love it there. I haven't been in a while. I really want to, I was telling Elio, like, I really want to go and I see y'all are doing an event in April in Tulum. So maybe that will be a good time for me to come. I'm not sure. But yeah. since you're bringing it up, I have to say it's so important. Every single time I've gone to Tulum, when I go to the airport, I've always had a driver. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you always have like a local driving. I'm going to, I have to talk about this experience because I'm all about safety. Yeah. You're talking about Mexico. So when I've gone growing up, cause you know, Growing up in California, it, you pop over in in New York, you go to like Bahamas like real quick. Like in California, you just pop over to Cabo. Like you just take a, you know, a plane and go there. It's just like a thing you do mm -hmm. if you like go to Vegas for a weekend or something. You just go to Cabo. So um, I grew up going there often, but the, th and I always had like it sorted and taken care of and like a driver picked us up and like took us and like to the resort, blah, blah, blah. I, when I had this like, resort experience and they were like gifting it to me blah 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 with my sister my sister and I were living in different states it was her birthday it was around her birthday she wanted to go to Tulum so she went a week earlier and you know by herself she rented a car went to Tulum had her experience came to the airport picked us up and I'm like no like don't do any of that just like drop off the car we'll just take a car service to like the resort she was she's my eldest sister she's you know so she was adamant like picking us up and driving us there and my empathic abilities was like uh, I don't know because like this is the way I always I didn't communicate I'm like this is the way I've always done it but like you know I'm Greek so when if a Greek wants to do something you don't you don't mess with them they're very set in their ways especially the Chinakis family so I just she my, my eldest sister so I just like listened to her but she you know picked me up from the airport drove us to the resort and on the way to the resort got pulled over for like doing something they they wanted to like take her to jail they had guns they like they had they had her like give her like over two hundred dollars on the spot it was it was a really bad experience it was like two hot like girls not you know what i mean like in the vehicle and another passenger and then we're at the resort and everything's fine and we're at the resort for like a week and then she wants to go to the the what's the classic the famous ruin that you go it's like an hour a couple hours two hours away Chichen Itza. yes so she yeah. wanted to go there so bad and it kept raining every day there was like a bus tour where you could pay like nothing like not a lot and you could just go there lunch included they bring you back safe and I'm like yo let's do that she's like no I want to drive I want to drive and I'm like okay and so we go right when we go out of the resort again she got pulled over and she got a ticket and they charged her hundreds of dollars and I don't know what was going on but it's really important if you don't speak Spanish I would stay clear of renting your own car and just having a taxi service you know a professional taking you to the destination that you need to go to instead of just driving around if you don't know the country. So just just be really safe. I mean, anything yeah. could have happened. I, I felt very vulnerable. I was really scared, actually. So I haven't been to, no. to Mexico since. So I need I need to go and have a better experience. And, and one of the most important things I want to say is I need to make sure I'm listening to my own voice and my intuition because I knew and I didn't say anything because I didn't want to like upset my sister because she was my eldest sister. But I knew and I've been many times and that was her first time going. So, okay. you know, even if someone's excited, we have to take precaution and be safe Always. no matter what. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. Don't go there alone by yourself you know like yeah just keep it keep it safe stay safe and yeah yeah let us know let us know that goes for anywhere in the world let us know if you if you go down to mexico and i mean you or anyone listening to this podcast there's almost always some uh team member down there so we'll be happy to if, even 
uh, recommend some fun stuff to do. And yeah. Oh yeah, I need a lot of I need a lot of fun things to do in Tulum. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I, I actually have um, a Spotify playlist. It's it's called Tulum Party, and I listen to it. I love it. It's so chill in my vibe. Oh my god. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. As we're wrapping up and rounding out, are there any last words you want to say to the listener, the viewer tuning in? Oh my god. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think I missed to add uh, talking about Tulum and South Mexico is that we are really happy for the token that we're building. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I think Shelba, it's um, we want it to be the token of recycling. So we're going to find the perfect balance within the tokenomics for our here's the catch our recycling program would be onboarding new businesses because it's a recycling company but with the onboarding we're gonna be adopting and merging crypto into the restaurant into an interesting way that they can even start accepting the token so if this pulls off nice we will have a, a really nice token with utility and that's where we're gonna be uh working on on the next couple of years until we make a public sale and we bring the investors for for the token you know like we make a yeah a, an ico and this token should our plan is the token to stay for good and have a a utility for for everyone that is having it so yeah everything everything goes linked to the so there's tokens in circulation right now and those tokens that we're receiving back again from either matcha sales or raffles on our raffle site we are starting to put them out there again through volunteering programs you know the beach cleanups the city cleanups as rewards so now helping the environment can get you into crypto and we are building the, the whole ecosystem so it's an art yeah yeah everything everything on nfts it's a mixture of art and experimenting and hard work and burnouts and getting up and trying new things so just stay consistent communicate your mission and don't don't be afraid of making mistakes or or failing because that's that's all life is about to keep trying and and keep doing your best as soon as you are alive <laughs> yeah so bravery i love that thank you everyone Tarzan here. Yeah. Oh, and really quick, but like you're y'all are like buying land there to protect the land and preserve the land, right? Oh yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> There's like a lot. <laughs> no, we uh, we haven't uh, purchased land itself. Uh, do, oh, you asked me about the the real estate. The further we've we've gone there is um a good partnership with Ecumal. I really suggest you to, whenever you visit Tulum, you're gonna see Ecumal on, on our socials posted here and there because we are partnered up with them. They are accepting our token, the Chelva, and it's an amazing 16 room community in the jungle. It has two pools. It's uh, it's like a yoga land, you know, it's it's amazing. <sighs> it's in the middle of, it's in the middle of the jungle. Uh, <laughs> we'll, I have new bathing suits. I'm ready to go swimming. I'm ready. I'm ready. And then do not forget. We'll bring you there. We, well, let's talk offline, but I actually have a friend in Tulum and they're building amazing things in the metaverse. We've already talked about doing events there and I've already like, you know, been, Oh my God. Yeah, I know. I've, no, I've already been, I've already told him about Gorilla Gang and stuff for us to like do stuff together. And he's a DJ, but they're building stuff in the metaverse. And I mean, they're, what they have going on is amazing. Amazing. So I'm oh gonna I'm gonna bridge the connection. So we have a we have a lot of building to do. Let's get it. That's what we do. We build together. We're gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna round it out. So thank you so much for tuning into. She's all over the place. You have just experienced a true culture kid, a culture kid building in the space. I'm so excited. <laughs> And thank you so much uh, to Gold Tree Studios, goldtreestudios.com. They're in the show notes. If you're into filmmaking, TV shows, 
things of that nature. Um, if you want to pitch your project to Gold Tree Studios, you can um, send them a pitch and tell them that she's all over the place sent you. Yeah, they have a, a full movie theater there. They have all the most advanced technology in Los Angeles. They have a full production music studio. They have eight editing bays. So whether you produce your film with Gold Tree Studios or not, you could just take the post production to Gold Tree Studios. But um, follow them on Instagram. They just started a Twitter. And uh, shout out to my brother, Tim Chinakis. He created Gold Tree Studios. They are amazing. I'm so proud of my brother. Yay. Uh, And then when you're in LA, we'll give you a private tour of the studio. So definitely uh, let me know when you're in LA. Yeah, but it's really cool because they have 10 different rooms. They have a a, a 1,000 square foot sound stage that's all white for like live painting and parties and curating and live minting. And then they have 10 rooms with all the same like um, screens that can show the same NFTs or rotate NFTs and show movies and video games and commercials commercials and things like that. So we can curate things there in the near future. But yeah, anyone tuning in, if you want a private tour, definitely just contact goldtreestudios.com and tell them I sent you and they'll hook you up. Uh, You're welcome. (laughs) And uh, I love you and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki, over and out.